I'm Leanne Martin. I'm a research associate um, on the Ocean Studies Board working on this project. Um, I think we could start with our committee introducing themselves. And then Liz, if you want to introduce yourself and your crew after. Uh, Trisha, I'll pass it off to you. Aloha, I'm Trisha Kehalani Watson. Um, I'm from Honolulu, Hawaii. Sorry, the screen just got big and it distracted me. Nice to meet everyone. Um, Russell? Hi, I'm uh, Russell Smith. I'm a member of the committee uh, and I am uh, in uh, Washington, DC. Uh, Angela? Hey everybody, this is Angela Villagomez, uh, originally from the island of Saipan, uh, in the Northern Mariana Islands, but I uh, live in a city called Washington, D.C., uh, and I work for an organization called the Center for American Progress. Thank you. Angie? Hi, everyone. Angie Dorr. Um, I am based in Oregon. I work for Oregon State University and Oregon Sea Grant, and, um, and am a member of the committee as well. Alexis? Hi, I'm Alexis Valeri Orton. I work for the Ocean Foundation. I'm based in Seattle, Washington, and I am also a member of the committee. Is Tony here? Hello, nice to see you. Uh, Tony McDonald, I'm on with Coast Institute and member of the committee. Thanks. And then our staff, Sue. Hello, everyone. I'm Susan Roberts, and I'm the director of the Ocean Studies Board and the senior staff on this activity. And Safa? Hi, everyone. I'm Safa, and I'm a program assistant for the Ocean Studies Board. Great. And Liz, I'll pass it off to you to introduce everyone. Hello, Liz Turpak. Very glad to be here. I report from NOAA, but I work very much on an interagency basis um, managing the federal input to the ocean decade and working very closely with our national committee. So it's absolutely my pleasure to be here and meet you all today. Thank you for giving your time to this cause. Okay, I will share my screen and give a little bit of background about um, this workshop and the academies. One second. Okay. Um, so thank you all for joining. This is um, the Inclusive and Equitable Ocean Workshop Planning Committee. Um, and a little bit about the National Academies. The National Academies was originally chartered in 1863 to provide independent objective analysis and advice to the nation. Um, and conduct other activities to solve complex problems and inform public policy decisions. The National Academies uh, consists of the National Academy of Sciences, Engineering, and Medicine. And these three bodies individually serve as honorary societies to recognize accomplished scientists in each of their respective fields and are the operating arm NASA. Um, the National Academies has a dual mission to honor top scientists, as well as serve as advisors to the nation on science, engineering, and medicine. We are a nonprofit and independent organization, um, and the National Academies is not part of the government or an, advoca an advocacy organization or a for-profit consulting organization. Um, this is just a diagram to show you that the academies are at the three honorary societies of providing oversight at the top. Um, and then here you see the seven programs under the executive office and the division of earth and life sciences or earth and life studies is where the ocean studies board um, lies under. 
Um, there are different typical activities that the academies produce, uh, consensus studies, workshops, and communication and outreach products. And this is a workshop planning committee. So I'll get in a little bit about our process with that. Um, we just introduced you to our committee. We had a number of uh, tremendous nominees for this committee, and we considered several factors in our efforts to construct a well-balanced and well-constituted committee. These include, among other things, geographic distribution, disciplinary balance. Um, so it was a multifaceted approach that took a lot of time um, to create this great committee here. And ultimately, we're very excited about the group that we have selected. Um, so the workshop process, we had com completed our nomination process and now we're in the process of committee meetings and we will continue to meet um, until we reach a workshop. Um, and when we have a workshop that will be later, hopefully this year, we'll let you know when those dates are. Um, and then after that will become a proceedings in brief and that will undergo a review process and then will be released to the public. Um, and here we'll go a little bit over the statement of tasks for this committee. And this is a part of the ocean decade. And this is a theme um, that comes out of our recent cross-cutting report. And so a transformal transformational aspect of the decade is its recognition that increasing awareness, understanding, and sharing of all the ocean has to offer um, us can only be achieved through the involvement of a diverse and representative ocean community. Equity, inclusiveness, respect, fairness, and scientific integrity are core principles of the decade and must permeate all activities so that, in the words of the decade, no one is left behind. Um, this theme will further the development of approaches that span the scientific, technical, policy, management, and stakeholder communities to ensure the involvement of diverse groups in ocean science are involved in the challenges of achieving sustainable ocean development. And as you can see under these five different um, points in this topic, um, there are different ocean shots to tie back into this theme. And here's our statement of task. Um, so this planning committee will conduct a public workshop to explore the best practices for an inclusive and equitable ocean. And this will include sharing of stakeholder concerns, um, approaches for broader involvement of diverse communities um, in contributing to and determining needs for ocean science for sustainable development. It'll look at resources and guidelines for furthering inclusion. It'll look at methodologies and metrics for best practices um, and look at different examples of programs that have shown um, success in this sphere. And um, at the end of this workshop, we'll, like I mentioned, there will be a proceedings of a workshop in brief um, that will be released afterwards. So that is it. Thank you. Um, I can, that was just a brief background of what we will be working on, and I can pass it to Liz to give a little bit more background um, for it as well. Uh, gladly. Um, I'm going to share my screen in the hopes that um, I don't break my my network. So stand by while I do this experiment that one must do when making presentations through Zoom. Please let me know if you see the slides. Yes, I can see them. Excellent. Fantastic. Thank you for letting me know. Um, let me just put this in PowerPoint mode. And it changes my monitor ever so slightly when I try to view slideshow. There we go. Uh -huh. So here we are. So um, I'm giving it with apologies to about half the committee who's heard a lot of what I'm about to say before. But I felt like it might be necessary for you to get a sense of why NOAA is investing in this now and why it cares about the ocean decade. So that's what I hope to impress upon you so you have that context as you go forward with your work. Um, 
So let me just proceed to the next slide here. So this decade, as you know, decades of things exist because the world comes behind it and thinks it's important to emphasize uh, a particular topic. And this particular decade came about over the course of the last 10 years, um, essentially where you know, the, there was basically a sense that there is consensus being built over the fact that knowledge about the ocean underpins essentially all the sustainable development goals. And so we saw in 2017, this declaration that there should be a decade of ocean science for sustainable development. And typically the United States isn't too keen on decades of years of things, but in this case, we were behind it. Uh, we, um, we invest heavily in ocean observations and we share that data with the world and we feel it's important that this be a major group project. So we saw this as an opportunity to take a big bold highlighter to the importance of knowledge about the ocean. Um, the, the world community tried to conjure up what it intended to do in this decade over the course of a several regional workshops and global stakeholder meetings over the course of 18 through 21. And essentially that yielded a few things I'll go over here. Um, an implementation plan, which I can make available to you if you're interested. Um, it basically outlines the who, what, where, and how um, of the decade at a fairly high level, but it does provide this, this action framework, which I will get to um, later in my slides. It's, and, and the most important thing is to get a sense of how, how this was devised is essentially the world said, you know, we need to do more science and we should concentrate on specific challenges. So there was consensus built around the 10 challenges you see on the screen here. And it's, you know, these high level outcomes are lofty. And I think there's recognition that, that the work conducted during the decade towards these outcomes won't necessarily be complete. I mean, fabulous if it was, right? But indeed, this is just teeing up a new way of working collaboratively together uh, on these ocean challenges. And the vehicle through which, the primary vehicle through which um, the world's community is asked to partake in this is to, to declare actions that you're going to do. So that's that action framework that I mentioned about in the implementation plan. I'm not going to dwell here on the nuances of the, um, the process by which actions are are endorsed, which I could go into that with you later if you're interested, but suffice to say that we spend a lot of time thinking about how we get involved with these actions to address these decade challenges in a proportional fashion so that it reflects how the United States feels about the necessity of us of, make, of making progress on these challenges. Um, just to give you a quickie about mechanisms about the decade. So, there is a decade advisory board and um, recently our national committee invited the two American reps to that decade board to come and infuse our national committee with, with their exposures to how things are being done uh, and the scientific front. Um, there's also a decade coordination unit, which is essentially the secretariat host at the IOC of UNESCO, the Intergovernmental Oceanographic Commission is the primary ocean science agency in the UN structure. Uh, and then of course, it's all about money at the end of the day to resource things. So there is an effort uh, to mobilize resources and certainly um, Alexis can speak to that uh, much more clearly than I because I believe uh, the Ocean Foundation is very much involved in this. So just to give you a quick sense of the governance, because you know it is a UN thing, so we do spend lots of time thinking about how do we make things um, aligned with protocol. There's essentially, as I mentioned before, the Decade Coordination Unit, which is the secretariat for the decade located at the IOC. It, it has tried to enhance um, a decentralized structure by empowering other external types of organizations listed here to help bolster and support actions emanating out of the decade. So you'll hear mention of decade coordination offices, collaborative centers, and in these regional organizations and networks um, that that have really started to take root over the last three, these first three years of the decade. So it was interesting because we were, we were challenged 
to try to get ahead of the curve here because we're essentially building the ship while sailing it. Um, and so if things sound confusing, um, that's because I would say these, this structure and this mechanism is still gelling. Uh, I think we're getting there, but it's, it's still not exactly as clear as it could be, I think, probably by year seven of the decade. Um, last but absolutely not least is the National Decade Committee. And so when the implementations plan suggested there be National Decade Committees, the United States rolled its sleeves up right away. Um, and so when it comes to coordinating how the United States does decade business, we have a partnership with the National Academies that host the U.S. National Committee for the Ocean Decade. And thank you for those of you who are committee members on this particular committee. Um, and I just wanted to note that it's not, even though I'm here speaking as a NOAA employee, it is not just NOAA who pays attention and leans in on the decade. We have an interagency working group with, sorry about the alphabet soup here, but I can, if you have questions about what any of these acronyms mean, I could certainly define them for you. Suffice to say, this is a, a body underneath the Ocean Policy Committee, which is all the ocean agencies in the federal government that come together to contemplate what we can, should, would do in this ocean decade space. So they meet at least quarterly or more as needed. So it's an active committee that communicates routinely with the staff of the National Committee. And in fact, I believe it was just a week ago that we provided an update to our National Committee about what we're up to. Uh, just to let you know, because I am from NOAA, also within NOAA, we have a task force for the decade that reaches across the line offices. So if you're not familiar with NOAA, we tend to be slightly stovepiped, satellites, fisheries, ocean service, research. Anyway, I could go on. We have representation from all those moving parts of NOAA so that when we talk about what NOAA's up to, we're speaking with a single voice and we are actually trying to leverage all of the science and services um, expertise across the agency. So our working group spends lots of time contemplating about these actions that I mentioned. We solicit actions and we work with our national committee to try to get the, not just federal agencies, because it's gotta be all of the United States that leads into this. So thanks to the national committee largely, and I'm gonna give you credit for that, um, we have, we, unfortunately, maybe fortunately, I'm sorry, the United States represents up to 25% of the endorsed actions thus far globally. And what that means to me, and we're keenly aware of this, is that if the United States doesn't deliver on that 25% uh, that we've indicated we would, that will reflect horribly on uh, the United States reputation and, and uh, intentions. So our interagency working group spends time contemplating on how do we help resource these actions? How do we make sure that administrative priorities align in such a way that will increase the odds of actions being fulfilled. Um, so if you have any questions about this slide, I can certainly answer them um, later on. Uh, we look at how our actions uh, align with the, um, the decade challenges. So here you can see um, out of a distribution of 71 actions, this is how they file up. Uh, and you, just to be clear, these numbers uh, don't add up to 71. It's you know certain actions apply to multiple um, decade challenges. So, but this just gives you a sense of where do we have our foot in the pot? How could we think about what more we can do in say spaces where we don't see as many actions being taken? So this is what we dwell a lot on. And you know when I talk about U.S. Ocean Decade actions, I'm not talking about just federal agencies. I'm talking about any American entity. We try to pay attention to the whole because to me that is more representative of how the United States is delivering on the ocean decade than just looking at strictly what the federal government is up to. And then this slide indicates, uh, you know, we, we spend, like I mentioned, we try to really think about how administration priorities align with the decade and vice versa. And so as this slide indicates, the OCAP, the Ocean Climate Action Plan that was recently released um, by the Ocean Policy Committee, there are synergies throughout. They're, they're mutually supportive. They're not excluding. It, one opportunity doesn't eliminate the next. And we look to capitalize on that for, for what the 
the National Committee jointly with the Interagency Working Group uh, intends to achieve over the course of time. So um, what this slide does not talk to are uh, in the Ocean Climate Action Plan, there is a table that speaks to cross-cutting principles and actions. And if you, ha I have at the end of this slide deck that you will have a link to the Ocean Climate Action Plan. And at pages 18 and 19, you'll see cross-cutting principles and actions that marry well with the intent of this particular committee. Um, so I would encourage you to take note of what's in there. I will absolutely do everything I can to make sure this committee has access to the subject matter experts who are behind that implementation such that you have that information and can use that um, in your planning effort. Uh, and today too, I unfortunately had hoped to be accompanied by the NOAA subject matter expert on environmental justice, Benkita Brown, but she ironically is currently attending a Department of Commerce environmental justice working group meeting. So she promises to be available to you if you care to speak with her uh, at a future committee meeting. Um, and then I believe I have uh, just a slide to say, hey, I hope this gives you some context. I'm glad to answer any questions. And oh, just by the way, at the tail end of my deck, I have a few other slides that may be of interest to give you additional context about the types of things our interagency working group contemplates, uh, specific deliverables that I think you should bear in mind. Um, and then of course, quick links to other things that I think might be helpful for your work. So uh, I will stop sharing and um, be available for any questions that you might have. Thank you. And, and if this was too brief, <laughs> I'm glad to go on further, but I'm mindful of the fact you have a lot of work to do. So just let me know if there's anything more you'd like more information on. So um, can you uh, just tell me, I want less information on some of those. I want you to tell me what you think as a sponsor success would look like out of this effort. So no problem. Um, uh, to be frank, which is the only way I know how to be, unfortunately, I wish I could be a little more polished. Um, the uh, from from so I have to say that uh, your meeting came up faster than I had a chance to consult with some of my NOAA experts on, uh, on exactly what broader NOAA might think about this. I know from a leadership of the Ocean Decade Enterprise, which if I didn't, if I wasn't clear about before, so NOAA is the co-chair of the interagency working group for the Ocean Decade. For those who aren't aware, we do that with state and NASA. And I know it's in the best interest of our effort there that this committee carry forward the thinking and provide greater resolution to the theme, um, inclusive and equitable ocean. I think your timing is perfect uh, relative to other things that are happening on the federal front. And I think you can help take the ocean shots, those, all those people who leaned in early on when things were very abstract, you can give them some sense that their efforts were not for naught. And I think you can increase the odds that we could better couple um, the thinking of the National Committee with the thinking of the broader ocean science community as to what is crucially, what is crucial to do now in this equity, environmental justice space. And it, there's never enough that can be done in this space, in my opinion. But, you know, if we could somehow find what is the what are the crucial next steps? I think that would be incredibly useful for NOAA, for the interagency. Thank you for Thank asking. You. Can I can I ask a follow up to that? So I pulled up the Ocean Climate Action Plan. Um, I'm that person. If you're referencing something that I don't quite have at my fingertips and then the presentation, I'm going to go ferret and find it. Um, so for these OCAP actions, is that where you're talking about you would like a little more guidance and direction as how to implement those in particular? Like are those, I'm very much a deliverables person. Like I wanna make sure I'm delivering on what your expectations are. So 
when you're saying sort of, you know, put more meat on the bones, I guess, for some of this, is are those in particular, these OCAP actions, is that what you're, I mean, is it just advanced environmental justice or is it all of this sort of generally, these, this, these pages 18 and 19 you were referencing? So, so I feel like I'm, I'm going into territory that are a little beyond my subject matter expertise. As I mentioned earlier, the people you need to talk to specifically about this are the owners of the, um, the ocean justice strategy drafting. So it's, there is, um, there's an environmental justice piece, but, but I, I recognize that this committee is thinking more broadly and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I'm just saying that this is one example of how what this committee is up to happens to align perfectly with what the federal government also is trying to put its arms around um, in, in a meaningful way. And if the outcomes of this workshop can feed into that, then I think the better we'll build momentum for investment in this space. Does that make sense? It does. Good. Amen. You know, I, I think just um, in the interest of um, collaboration, um, you know, the National Committee was really designed to help us build momentum in the United States for doing something significant with this ocean, this decade of ocean science for sustainable development. And it's that last piece that I think has made this ocean decade so different from a pre previous decade in the 70s that focused on ocean exploration. It's that link to, you know, sustainability, which is a lovely word, but it's hard to do perfectly. But by golly, it's a worthwhile cause. So I think, um, you know, there's an opportunity here and the degree to which you can help us articulate the most profitable return on investment. What, what has to be done? Otherwise, we won't achieve that cross-cutting um, objective. You know, how do we, as your terms of reference even clearly indicate, how do we make sure that our ocean decade actions have equity and inclusion as a clear outcome of their efforts? Like how do we help um, mature the actions that are currently going forward to optimize you know, the, the utility of the product, the, the, the capacity of um, countries, the capacity of America, I mean, you know, it's it's not a si simple question to ask. I recognize, and uh, you know, given the breadth of the ocean decade, it makes it all the more challenging. So, Trisha, I respect the fact that you're trying to find something very na more narrow and concrete. But we're looking to this committee to help us <laughs> narrow in the scope to some degree. Liz, I had my hand raised um, to ask a question. I can't see hands. It's I Alexis. Um, <laughs> oh, hi. Okay. Um, one of the things that you know we as a committee talked about briefly earlier, and I'm curious to hear your perspective on, is sort of like the users of what this committee is able to contribute and produce in the form of our workshops and report. Um, do you see NOAA wanting recommendations for its own programs or for calls for proposals or examples, or do you see this more as something that you would point NOAA's individual staff or partners to, to use as a guide? Um, just trying to help us understand how we can yeah. deliver something effectively that will then lead to more inclusive and equitable ocean science programs. Oh, thank you for asking that question, because when I saw uh, Leanne's slide about the um, the flowchart showing how the committee works and it results in a publication, <laughs> I was texting my fellow, who I think is on the call here, Selena Harris, um, we need to take that slide and show how that publication is implemented uh, and is ingested and applied and then flows back to actual 
actions that are resourced. See, to me, that's the thread we're trying to weave here. We really want to show proof, um, not only of effort, but real traction on the ideas that the National Committee has come up with. Do you think that NOAA will be able to play a role in helping to kind of implement and disseminate that report? Do you see that as a role you would play? Great. Yeah, no, no, we won't. The idea is to not make this and any byproduct, including this workshop, uh, just on a shelf. We want this to be, to have a life beyond this administration, to have, you know, to make, make an impact. We want impact. We want to figure out a way to articulate things to be, to mobilize that consensus, to help with advocacy, et cetera. And I, I don't know that I can state much more without getting myself in trouble. So thank yeah, you for so asking I'm just gonna jump in Liz for a minute because um, I wanna clarify something about you know the this committee and what the product's gonna be. And that is that we will do a write-up of the workshop, but it's going to be what people discussed at the workshop. It's not going to be a synthesis the way a consensus report would be a synthesis and then providing recommendations. So we're really more collecting um, viewpoints um, from the community through the, through the workshop and providing a summary of those discussions. Yeah, hey, thank you, Sue, for clarifying that. Um, um, yeah, resourcing resourcing this particular committee is something Noah is um, is behind for sure, and um, generating products that we can generating a, at least a synthesis of discussion is still moving the needle forward in our opinion. Yeah, so I know we have, um, in addition to the committee members, we have other participants online and they're welcome to raise their hand and introduce themselves and ask any questions they may have as well. But Liz gives amazing presentations, so, you know, she may have answered all your questions. Hey, just to let everyone know that awesome animated slide, credit to my uh, Knauss fellow. I like to call her mine. I don't, I shouldn't call her mine. She's the world's fellow. She, <laughs> Selena Harris. She's fantastic. If, if you haven't met her yet, you absolutely should. Tony, go ahead. Yeah, I'll defer to other people uh, on the line, but um, did, did what I wonder, I can't recall if, <laughs> our agenda for today. Um, but I, I wonder if this is the right time to go back to the terms of reference for our charge here. And maybe that's not the right term. Um, so to be sure that we're clear on that, because it was a fairly long list of things with some compound complex sentences uh, for my brain to completely wrap around. So I don't know if this is the appropriate time, um, Susan or Leanne, to have that discussion, or we're going to do that later. Yeah, I don't. I don't think it's a bad thing, Tony. You know, to start that discussion, we may not. We may finish it later, but at least we can. We can start. I guess with Liz on the phone, it seemed to me to be most yeah. maybe, maybe to have some time on that now might make sense. Again, not to hijack the conversation if there's other things you all need to get through. But I'm feeling a little, little more need for that. <clears throat> and I'm looking at the description provided on the the website for this meeting, for this committee. This one right here. I put in the chat window. It was on one of Leanne's slides too. Yeah, it, yeah, it's on my slide if you want, if that would be helpful. But Liz is, uh, did put in the statement of task in the chat.
Yeah, Tony, why don't you go ahead with your question? I, could I have it up my brain? Like I said, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> sure. a little, but that was part of the problem. <laughs> okay, well, we'll, we'll share. And then maybe it's literally just a, a meter of reading it more slowly. So, okay, so there's like about a long clauses here. I just <laughs> um, was trying to remember. So best practices, is, I just mentioned that because it did come up in our earlier discussion that some committee members in general thought that was a bit of a an opportunity here. So I'm just I, with one takeaway listening to this. Um, again, I, I'm going to open it up to the rest of the committee to look at this. Maybe you all have digested it more than I have, but I wondered if anybody had any a, any more specific questions about this statement of task. So this the very specific participants workshop will be asked to offer suggestions for actions that incorporate inclusion and equity into the into the topic of themes as part of the process for developing and implementing the research. So that's something I just want to highlight because I did feel like that was reflected a little bit in our back and forth. It wasn't entirely mm -hmm. clear to me that we, it does sound like we have an obligation to think about how how is a cross cutting theme, whatever our, outcomes from this more particularly will be used across the other other uh, topical themes as well. Again, that was said, but again, it didn't settle entirely into my brain. Um, again, we're also moving forward trying to figure out what the scope, but also what the what the what the you know how can we more focus this uh, given that it, it is something that could easily uh, um, explode around us. Um, Yeah, those were the questions I had. I just really needed a little more time to test it. I will look at it again after this call, but I, I just wanted to make sure in case anybody else on the committee needed any clarification on this statement of task at this point. Tony, in, in reading it again with your help of focusing, I think what's coming through to me is that it's really about the discussions at the workshop as covering all these topics, but but not that we will, like Susan said, it'll be just a report out of what people said rather than like a set of recommendations, right? So just that we want to facilitate and ensure that these discussion points are covered by our participants, but that we won't be trying to reach any consensus or, or synthesize them. And But this last sentence about sort of the net to answer Liz's question about kind of what happens next, that there potentially will be a next phase where some members of the committee or participants will then kind of work on the integration of the discussions in maybe maybe slightly more actionable ways. But it seems like our job is just to tee up the discussions and make sure the right people are in the room. Yeah, and I would add to that, Alexis, that I think one of the functions of the workshops will be to um, make the resources that are available now more um, accessible to uh, the community that may not be aware of these resources that they can tap into. So I, I see that as another function of the activity. Good morning, all. Um, I don't see on my screen a way to raise my hand, so I'm sorry for interrupting, but uh, I'm Scott Miller in the Alaska region of NOAA Fisheries, um, presently currently the um, Arctic Policy Advisor to Dr. Kelly Chris, the Deputy Undersecretary for International Fisheries. Um, in, and this is all new to me, and I may be speaking out of turn, but there are major initiatives happening in the Alaska Arctic with regard to inclusion and, and a lot of the themes that you're talking about. Um, I wonder if, uh, and, and I will talk with Liz, I'll, I'll, I'll educate myself more. I obviously do not have a, a flavor for, for all of this right now, but um, the North Pacific Fisheries Management Council has several action committees looking at local and traditional ecological, ecological knowledge, uh, climate task force. Uh, there, there are major changes happening, major changes. I, I've been here for more than two decades. Um, and a shout out to, to Mr. Villagomez from Saipan. I lived in Saipan for five years and, and my sailboat is still homeported there, quite frankly. But uh, 
um, major changes are happening in this administration in, in the way that we embrace uh, communities that have possibly been underheard, if you will, uh, in the past. And I think that I, I, I definitely take to heart the concept of wanting deliverables. I'm a contracting officer's representative as well. So I, I work in the mindset of deliverables. And I'm thinking that as a suggestion, your committee may really want to reach out to the Alaska region. We have a new uh, tribal coordinator and I can provide it contact information. Uh, she's so new that I haven't actually met her yet because I work in a virtual environment. Um, but we also have a major uh, emphasis in the, in the council process right now. Uh, these issues revolve largely around salmon bycatch, which I spent a career working on trying to reduce and or eliminate, um, but also other, other issues of inclusion, issues of how we take public testimony, issues of membership on advisory panels and such. Um, I, I will say in my more than two decades with no fisheries, this is the most comprehensive change, paradigm shift, if you will, that I've seen, not scientific, not biological, with people. And I think ultimately that's what this is all about. So I, I will uh, I will just add that, those two cents there and uh, very interested in this, very new to it, definitely naive about all that you've done and, and done so far, uh, but, but very interested. And, and I will offer my uh, time to anyone who wants to reach out to me. So thank you. Yeah, that's hey, great, Scott. I'm sorry, Sue. I just yeah. wanted to respond. Yeah. Uh, Scott, we'll definitely tag up after to make sure you have all you need to know and um, and that the committee can connect with you as soon as possible for more detail or any of your contact. Great. Yeah, I'll take it on as a fourth job. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much, Scott, because I think yeah, and the examples you gave really sound so relevant to what this planning committee is going to be undertaking. Uh, so just out of curiosity, um, this statement of task has not actually been vetted across with no leadership at all yet, Sue. So in the interest of mm -hmm. full disclosure, um, do, is there space for, meaning time, actually, a week? <laughs> <laughs> Could I have a week? <laughs> but just get back to you if there's any major heartburn on any of this or major tech changes rec that we recommend to this committee. No, um, certainly there's that opportunity. I will say that there is um, a process, you know, if it is a major change in direction, that would require um, a re, uh, an institutional review. So just to let you know. So yeah, ASAP is, would be my <laughs> recommendation for that. Um, and I will say it is, it's, you know, it's based on the recommendations of the committee that wrote the, the, the cross-cutting themes report. Just like I say, you know, given, given what Scott just mentioned and the fact that there is a subject matter expert at NOAA in this space, I don't want you to not benefit from, from that input. So, uh, so thank you. Yeah, for I'm sure. Hearing, I I'm hearing thinking clarifications, not revisions. I think Tony said um, that what he imagined is that there could be further clarifications as opposed to changes in direction. Yeah. But I guess the, you know, the other opportunity is certainly to contribute ideas for the um, committee's activities. So certainly in thinking about, you know, what to cover in the workshop and uh, you know potential speakers and perhaps even 
mechanisms for you know incorporating a broad um, community of ideas would be certainly welcome. I have a quick comment. Um, my name is Allison Myers, and I run a team of scientists working on seaweed for CO2 removal. Um, several points. One is I want to commend NOAA for the recent um, opportunity to work on that because it's very um, far in advance and it's very needed because we need to remove CO2. Um, two things. One is um, I'm not a scientist, and yet I lead a team of scientists. I started out as an oyster farmer who happened to observe things going on in a system with runoff and seaweed growth and just had ideas. So I think this issue of diversity and inclusion is important because people out in the field, whether they're fishers or mechanics or whatever they may be, they have ideas. And I think it's a very big challenge of how to bring them in. How I found my way through, through bureaucracies and funding calls that I knew nothing about. And yet here we are working on a big idea. So I think. Um, Two things. One is the US government seems to be requiring inclusion in teams working on research. It seems to be new, and I think it's great. One thing I would like to see is educational efforts when there's innovation and research going on in an area for there to be more grassroots education, or at least availability of lectures or what have you, to local populations, because they may have ideas on how to solve problems. The seaweed we work on comes into the coast. It smothers seagrasses and uh, mangroves. It needs to stop. I'm working on sargassum. And they may have ideas, practical things, um, contributions to make to the work. So thank you for um, allowing me to be here today, uh, not being a scientist, but working very hard to address climate goals. So thank you. Thank you, Allison. And I Actually, if you would like to send us your contact information for, for future activities, that would be welcome. Happen to help, happy to help any way I can. And Sapa, I think we can take down the statement of tasks now so we can see everyone. Yeah, that's great, thank you. So any any other comments or questions? Such a quiet group. <laughs> Surprise. Okay, well, Tricia, I don't know, perhaps as the chair, you'd like to have the last word today? <laughs> I typically do, but I'm I'm mostly in my just trying to listen and wrap my You're arms trying. around this and give everybody <laughs> some time. But um, I do think we're very excited. I think we have lots of wonderful work ahead of us. Um, I would, and maybe a question and then a final word. So we have a bunch of people who are on the call right now that are not um, on our committee. 
what is the expectation for your folks' involvement? Like, are your folks participating in the workshop? Like, or is it just your sponsor? I just want to make sure, like, we're clear as to, I mean, because there's, I mean, obviously a bunch of people who've joined who I think would be great participants and have a lot to offer. So I'm just trying to understand those expectations. Yeah, and we certainly have time for people to introduce themselves if you're willing to yeah, do that. that. Would, I would appreciate that. Um, yeah. I don't necessarily know it. So maybe um, can we start with Selena, since she's already been mentioned today? I'm not sure if my camera will work. Um, I'm having a little bit of technical issues and didn't want to mm -hmm. troubleshoot it too much and cut off the meeting. But hi, everyone. I am Selena Harris. I am a Canal Solo. I'm currently working with Liz Terpec on the Ocean Decade. Um, so my involvement will probably stay from that side, but I am very happy to be here and to hear about what's going to evolve from this process. Okay, thank you, Selena. And I'm just going to go in, on the, in the order I see on my screen. And the next is Jules. Hi everyone, um, I'm Jules Lithringer. I'm an early career liaison for the um, National Committee. Um, and um, I've really enjoyed the conversation today. It's nice to meet everyone. And Luis Vega. Luis, are you able to unmute and uh, introduce yourself? Yeah, perhaps not. Okay, let's see. Next, I have Ash. If you're able to unmute and introduce yourself. Okay, um, <laughs> we'll just keep going down the list. Uh, Cynthia Dinwiddie. Uh, new mic. Okay. <laughs> Demarcus Robinson. Hey, good um good afternoon. My name is Demarcus Robinson. I'm also a Canals Fellow in the White House Council on, on Environmental Quality and the Water Conservation Team. Uh, so my joining of my input or joining of this meeting was the fact that with the Ocean Climate Action Plan, we have the ocean justice strategy that we're currently trying to um, develop. And so I was wanting to hear different ideas and perspectives as we're kind of also trying to, you know, um, put the put the wheels on the on the truck. Um, so, uh, but I would like to you know, stay connected and, um, and be part of the conversation and the workshops going forward. Yeah, excellent. Very welcome. And let's see, I think uh, John Ziddle. If you would like to introduce yourself. Okay, um, next, Paul Ehrlich. <laughs> okay, maybe, I don't know if people are not able to unmute or quite wait, they're not there, but let's see, also have Preston DeVazia. Now I know why it's been so quiet though. <laughs> Preston? Hmm. Ah, somebody else also unable to unmute. Okay. Yeah, sorry for the technical difficulties there, um, but we certainly welcome you to keep in touch with us um we have email always and and so we were able to you know sort of let you know about upcoming um, meetings of this group and of course the workshops as they as they come to fruition oh Jules I see you have something in the chat do you want to talk about it Ah, okay. All right. Well, we'll save the chat and certainly share that um, also with the committee. 
So it looks like Jules was unable to unlike too um, in her current workspace. Hi, Sue. I do see that Jules did ask a specific question or made a specific suggestion, and I don't uh -huh. know what the thinking is on that. So maybe we can respond to that. Okay. Yeah. So I can read it out for those um, who may not be able to see the chat. So this is from Jules, and she says something I've been thinking about when acquainting myself with the statement of task. I think there could be two sort of streams to this work. One that has to do with building an inclusive and equitable marine workforce, and the other to move forward with research and conservation that is based in local, inclusive, and equitable stakeholder community leadership. I like that a lot, actually. I mean, I and I think it was it sort of takes off in some of the discussions we were having in the session before mm -hmm. this. Correct. So yeah. I do think if we can find a way to pull that language into the next discussion we're having, that would be something to further discuss. And I think does speak to why I would like, you know, to find a way to keep a lot of the people on this call involved, because it does seem this is everybody working in this space. And I, I'm a big fan of, well, inclusive discussions. <laughs> so, <laughs> Angie. Awesome. Um Sorry, and then the screen popped up that asked if I wanted you to unmute me and I'd already unmuted myself. So um, uh, I was just going to say, uh, I also like that idea, Jules, and um, I can just say as a little bit of background from um, being on the Cross-Cutting Themes Committee where we came up with these themes, um, uh, kind of the goal of this committee, the um, uh, inclusive and equitable ocean, equitable and inclusive ocean, I can never re remember which order it goes in, um, is to provide some sort, um, some guidelines for the um, the other themes, and the idea is both that it will that it will take on both those perspectives. That the research um, that's conducted um, will include diverse voices and um, be more inclusive, broader reaching, you know, um, community engaged type things. Um, but also that some of the the outcomes will be will be more inclusive as well. Um, so. Uh, I like that idea um, or the way you phrased it. And I just want to say it's very much in line with the idea of this being a foundational theme that will influence the other themes um, because that is kind of the goal there. Okay, um, anything else? Yeah, I'll mention one other thing, Tricia, um, sure. since we have the opportunity. And that is that the, the National Academies and particularly through the Ocean Studies Board is developing another study related to this topic and it's on diversity, equity, inclusion, um, belonging, accessibility and justice in ocean studies. And so that's um, that will be a full consensus study. It'll be an in-depth look at the issue more from the workforce lens than, um, than what we've scoped for this particular workshop. It's not connected to the ocean decade the way that this one is. And um, we're hopeful that that um, consensus study will get off the ground um, later this year. So we have about half of the funding in hand and the rest of it has been promised. So. We're very excited to get that one going. But I think there's going to be some, you know, certainly some um, crossover between these two activities in, in various ways. Great. Okay, well, I want to, I mean, just, I guess, my last word. Um, thank you so much to everybody. This is really an exciting endeavor. Um, I think we very much look forward to continuing to have input from all of you, those who are not formally on the committee, but obviously come with a tremendous amount of experience and talent, and um, I think can be very valuable to this process. So just thank you again, everybody. Sue, back to you. Okay, well, thank you. And um, thank you for me to Leanne for really organizing this, um, this meeting today and really working so hard to put together this fabulous committee. And we really look forward to working with everyone.
on these work on the workshop activity. And we'll be in touch too. So you know, check out our website and uh, for all the latest updates. <laughs>